learners in this session we are going to transportation communication and warehousing that is done by business organizations as a business support service so here we are going to study meaning importance of transportation meaning and importance of communication and meaning and importance of warehousing transportation goods produced at one place may be used or consumed at various places as the markets for goods are spread over length and breadth of the country and extended to countries across the border nowadays transportation helps us in transferring goods all over the world so goods have to be carried from the place of production to the place of consumption here comes the transportation as its help the process of carrying goods and passengers from one place to another is known as transportation and the modes used for these are roadways railways airways and waterways transportation creates place utility and it removes the hindrance of place that is it removes the barriers of distance why i am saying this because from the place of production the goods are given to the place where the consumers want so it removes the hindrance of place how transportation is important nowadays it helps in the distribution of goods within the country and across the borders it helps in bringing about stable prices that is uniform prices for different products are possible only with the help of transportation it is uniform prices in different markets because the traders are able to adjust the supply of goods at different places according to the changing demand this is possible only with the help of transportation if in one place there is less price or less demand then the goods are transported to another place where there is in high demand so there is equal distribution of the goods as well as prices can be fixed uniformly consumers have the benefit of getting goods at their doorsteps that is in your house you are getting the goods nowadays because of the transportation system and the development of the transportation system and transportation is giving help to get wide choice of the goods at competitive prices from the production centers the goods are transported to the centers where the consumers are located and so wide choice of the goods is possible with the help of transportation transportation ensures continuous supply of raw materials to the industry raw materials are transported to the industry continuously and transportation contributes to growth of large scale industries how it is helping that it is allowing inflow of materials at a fast rate and outflow of materials at a fast rate international competition is encouraged with the improved transport system that is global markets are accessible with the help of the transport system the buyers and sellers will be located in different countries because of the advancement in the transportation system the buyers of one country can contact the seller of other country and get that product at their doorstep modes of transport while traveling from one place to another we use different modes of transport like car bus boat aeroplane etc people also move with the help of these transport or modes of transport while traveling from one place to another we use car 
bus or a train. Sometimes people will use boat, ship, aircraft etc. for their movements. These are the means through which we move from place to place or modes of transport. These are all various means through which we move that is we will use boat, ship, aircraft etc. All these means of transport need the support of a medium or mode through which it travel. A truck needs the support of road. Aeroplane needs the support of air. Ship needs support of water to travel. These are the modes of transport. We have different types of modes of transport like road transport, rail transport, water transport and air transport. First we can consider road transport as a mode of transport. Transport by road is undertaken through animals like horses, camels, donkeys and transport by road is done with the help of vehicles drawn by animals like bullock carts and sometimes by motor vehicles in the form of van, truck, etc. Use of animals and vehicles drawn animals have limited use nowadays. That is, it is used mainly in the rural areas. Rail transport refers to the movement of passengers and goods by trains which are on railway tracks laid for the purpose. Rail transport has the carrying capacity over long distance and rail transport is economical. It is safe. Then coming to another type of transport or modes of another mode of transport. We have studied road transport, rail transport, then coming to water transport. Water transport refers to the movement of goods and passengers on waterways by using various means like boat, ship, steamers, etc. The movement may take place inside the country or from one country to another. With the help of water transport, we will move from one country to another country. Then coming to air transport. Movement of goods and passengers by using aircraft is termed as air transport. It is the speediest mode of transport and is mostly used for carrying passengers. As for goods, air transport is mostly used for goods of high value and low volume like medicines, spare parts for machinery, electronic equipments etc. So, when we compare the road transport, rail transport, water transport and air transport for long distance that is for if a country if you are going by train and if you are taking three days you better opt for air transport. Nowadays it is so cheap also if you are booking three months in advance instead of going by train means you have to spend three days in the train as well as you have to spend expenses for food. Another factor, you will get tired. If you are considering these factors, even if the air transport is so costly when you think, when you book in advance, that is before 3 months, you will get the benefit of air transport and that you can move fast. And if you are booking in advance means at a low cost also nowadays. So you will not get tired and try to adopt this practice. Coming to communication which is an important thing that is done by every human being. Have you noted you have a body with a mind and how you are using, how you are transferring your ideas, information, opinion etc. So, communication is the main thing that should be considered by you people when you are doing business also.
So, coming to the meaning of communication, communication is the process of transmission of ideas, opinions, thoughts and information through speech, writing, gestures, symbols, etc. between two or more persons. Gestures, very good. Like the gestures, symbols, you are seeing so many symbols as traffic symbols on the road. You can see traffic symbols that will help the traffic to move smoothly. So, communication contains a message that is transmitted between two parties. One is the sender and the receiver. Sender will transmit the message to the receiver. So, minimum two parties are involved. One is the sender and other is the receiver. You are the receiver and I am sending this message. You, I am sending this matter means that is the message that is communicating to you. Sender is sending the message to the receiver with the help of communication. The process of communication is said to be complete when the receiver receives the message and responds to it or acts according to it. If I am teaching you, if you are understanding, you will say yes. I understood. Will you come back? Will you write the exam? Yes. Noting the head. So that you are responding to it. So that means sender can understand that the other party understood it properly and if you are acting accordingly then that is a proof that the message have, has been communicated properly from the sender to the receiver. From the receiver to the sender, message will move. Types of communication includes oral communication, written communication and non-verbal communication. Oral communication. When a message is transmitted orally, it is oral communication through spoken words. I am speaking to you. You are understanding that this is a form of oral communication. Hello, please come here. That means you are understanding. You have to come here. So, I am saying that orally. That is oral communication. It may be in the form of lectures, telephonic conversations, meetings, radio message, etc. That is about oral communication. Coming to another type of communication, written communication. When a message is transmitted through written words, it is called written communication. It may be in the form of letters, telegram, reports, circular, notices, etc. Coming to non-verbal communication. Communication without any use of words is non-verbal communication. Sometimes when you look at some pictures, graphs, symbols, diagrams, some messages conveyed to you. All these are different forms of visual communication. That is why we are using this technique as an important technique to understand or to create awareness among the citizens of India. We are displaying postures that you have to clean the country. In that way, we are showing the messages either in the railway station or in inside the trains nowadays. So, visual impact is very high and that will be communicated fast. Non-verbal communication is possible with the help of horns, whistles, bells, buses. You must have seen, you must have heard in the bus, the driver is horning. So that the passengers who are walking on the track will move away from the road. Whistle, that is usually coaches will guide the sports persons with the help of whistles. Bells used in schools will make the students aware that the class is going to start. And similarly, class will end at the end of a bell. Coming to buses, usually used by the authorities of an organization to call the peons or lower level staff with the help of buses. For sending the message or getting the response, we require a medium. 
such a medium is termed as means of communication. Communication carries a message to the receiver and a feedback or response from him is there in communication. So, message is given by the sender to the receiver and receiver will say if he has understood that or not to the sender. So, message is communicating from the sender to the receiver and from the receiver to the sender. Commonly used means of communication. Postal mail services, courier services, telephone, cellular phone, telegraph, internet, fax, email and voicemail. Coming to merits of communication, it helps in the promotion of the business. When we are considering the business, because of the modern means of communication, businessmen sitting at different places can finalize the business deals without much difficulty with the help of mobile phone as well as the computer or laptop. So, you must be understanding very well how it is affecting business world nowadays. Mobility of labor is possible with the help of communication. People who have gone for employment to places away from their homes and families are able to keep in touch with their friends and relatives through various means of communication. So, whenever you are in a far off place, you will call your relatives, your friends, your family regularly, you know, even inside the office. In between the office time, you can have one minute contact with your relatives. That is with the help of which form? That is with the help of development in communication. Then, socialization is possible through communication facilities like telephone, fax, email, etc., People are able to exchange messages, information, etc. So, communication helps in keeping contact with the persons who are in far away places in times of need also. Communication helps in coordination and control. Offices of big business houses and government departments may be situated at different places and for their effective Controlling and coordination, there comes communication. Efficiency in job performance is possible if there is effective communication. If there is effective communication means high job performance. That is more cooperation, good understanding or close understanding among employer and employee also. Communication is helpful to professionals. Lawyers are to attend courts situated at different places. First court will be located at one place, another will be little bit far away from that place. With the help of the phoning facility or mobile facility nowadays, professionals are becoming more competent in their work. Doctors are to visit different nursing homes. So, they will get information relating to the urgency from different hospitals, so they will move, that is doctors will move to the concerned nursing homes with the help of communication, mobile phone that is with them. Chartered accountants have to go to different offices, that is also possible with the help of the communication that they have received with the help of telephone. So, telephonic communication helps them for this purpose. Meeting emergencies is possible with the help of communication. In the case of any accident or incidents like fire, immediate help can be asked through modern means of communication and that type of help is made available only through these modern means of communication. So, you must be knowing its importance or merit. Communication is useful for sea and air navigation. Means of communication are extremely important for navigation of ships, aircrafts, which need to be guided from control rooms at particular locations. Broadcasting of educational programs on radio and telecasting on televisions are possible and that is the popular means of educating students. Radio and televisions as a means of mass communication are important media for advertisement because it will reach a large mass, large sect of people, large 
population will receive that advertisement that will benefit that particular seller. At this point, you should know how to arrange your things also. You will store your books in a proper manner in your table at home, no? Or in your study places, as well as you have to arrange your dress materials. So, some sort of storing you must have studied it, studied already. So, when we are considering the business, warehousing is an aspect which is meant for large scale storing. So, go down refers to a place that is used for storing goods. And warehousing refers to the activities involving storage of goods on a large scale. In a systematic manner, in an orderly manner and making them available conveniently when needed. Have you noted when you go to a medical store, how fastly the seller is helping you to find out the correct medicine for each and every customer. This is because of the proper arrangement of the goods inside that store. So, if you know that particular product where it is located, you can easily take it and give it to the customer so the sales can be made very fast. So, warehousing helps in improving sales also. Warehousing means holding or preserving goods in huge quantities from the time of their purchase or from the time of their production till their actual use or actual sale. Importance of warehousing, storing raw materials. To maintain continuity in production, a good quantity of raw materials is to be kept in stock. Next, warehousing helps in storage in anticipation of rise in price. In case the manufacturer anticipates rise in price of raw materials in future, which he likes to purchase in advance, he will store it properly in his go-down or warehouse. Storage of finished goods is also possible with the help of warehousing. Goods are generally produced in anticipation of demand, but these are to be stored properly till it the sales take place. So, storage of finished goods is possible only with the help of warehousing. Storage of goods by the wholesalers. Wholesalers buy goods in bulk and maintain stock of goods in warehouses for sale in small quantities to retailers from time to time. Then, warehousing helps in packaging and grading. Goods in warehouses are divided into grades according to its size, quality. And then it is packed for convenient handling and for sales purpose. In the case of cashew nuts, you must have seen broken type of as well as the whole type of nuts. That too, tight nuts are there, different colors. According to the color also we will grade and according to the quality. So, packaging and grading is usually done nowadays by the warehouses or go-downs. Warehousing is useful for the importers. Bonded warehouses are there which are used for storing imported goods till the importer is able to pay the custom duty. After paying the import duty to the warehouse, they will take the material that is imported. Coming to warehouse types, private warehouse, public warehouse, government warehouse, bonded warehouse and cooperative warehouse. Warehouses which are owned and operated by manufacturers to store their own stock, that is private warehouses. Public warehouse is an independent unit which stores goods of other firms. Anyone can store his goods in these warehouse on payment of rent. Government warehouses are owned, managed and controlled by the government. Bonded warehouse store imported goods for which import duty is yet to be paid. These warehouses are generally owned by dock authorities. Bonded warehouses are found near the ports. 
cooperative warehouses are set up by the cooperative societies for the benefit of their members. So, it is providing facilities at an economical rate. Functions of warehouse, storing goods. Storing helps for future use, consumption and for sale. Protection of the goods from heat, dust, wind, moisture, etc. It makes special arrangements for different products according to the nature. Cold temperature is needed for some products, heat is needed, likewise it will arrange. As another function of warehouse, I am saying risk bearing. The risk of loss in storage is borne by the warehouse keeper. So, he takes all precautions to ensure the safety of the goods. When goods are deposited in any warehouse, the depositor gets a receipt as a proof of the goods in the store. This receipt can be used as a security to obtain loans and advances from the banks and other financial institutions. Certain commodities are not consumed in the form they are produced. They need some processing. Processing helps the product into a consumable form and that is also a function of warehousing nowadays. Warehouse keeper may also undertake to perform the functions of grading, branding of the goods on behalf of the manufacturer. Transportation is also done by many warehouses nowadays. That is transport arrangement to the bulk depositors are done by the warehouse centers. Warehouses collect goods from the place of production and sends goods to the place of delivery on request of the depositors. So dear learners, we have studied about transportation, communication and warehousing. That is its meaning and importance we have covered. Hope you understood this very well. Please study that regularly by writing it in a paper and then only you can write on the exam. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.